Hey team, this is Grant David Collins, and welcome to Basement Philanthropy, a place for people who do not want to wait until they are rich or retired to create meaning, impact, and connection with their money, regardless of the amount. On this episode, we're going to be talking about how Santa Claus, also known as St. Nicholas, became one of the world's first philanthropists. So let's get started. For those of you who are watching the YouTube video podcast, you may notice something behind me that has not been in the scene before. And if you aren't listening to the podcast on YouTube, I would highly consider it this time because of what I'm about to tell you. Behind me is approximately 10,000 pounds of donated food that we collected on our most recent food drive. It is a little bit overwhelming, and I will take some other videos and and put them in the feed so that you can see all of the food. Basically, there's a room behind me that is halfway filled with food up to the brim, and then there is food all surrounding this podcast table. And it is just incredible. Like It's amazing to be able to record this podcast surrounded by so much good and giving that is going to help people in my local community be able to have food this Christmas season. Now, it is the Christmas season, and I hope that it is a wonderful and a beautiful time of year for you. And, you know, I've been looking at Christmas through a little bit of a different lens this year as I've gone all in on philanthropy and giving. And what I've noticed is that when you peel back the commercialization of Christmas in different traditions that we have as far as a Christmas tree or the stockings above the fireplace or Santa Claus, you find this under foundation of giving charity, love, reaching outside of yourself. And that is one of the reasons why even though Christmas has been so commercialized, that we still have this different feeling during this time of the year because the foundation of the traditions are based on this holistic giving. So one of the characters that I wanted to dig into deeper is Santa Claus because he's such a prominent figure in U.S. Christmas celebrations and so I wanted to understand a little bit more like where he came from and and why we put him out there as somebody that is delivering gifts from house to house. And it turns out that Santa Claus, also known as St. Nicholas, was alive during the third century, so a long time ago. And he lived in a village called Patara, which is in modern day Turkey. Now, Nicholas was raised in a wealthy, devout Christian family. And in fact, he was planning to go into the ministry, the Christian ministry. But when he was very young, his wealthy parents passed away from one of the epidemics that was around during that time. And so he is left alone with all of the money That his family had. And so he turned to the scriptures to understand what he should do with his life now that he had all of this funding. And he came to the scripture in the Bible that talks about the experience when Jesus is telling a rich young ruler to sell all he has and give to the poor. So instead of living a life of luxury, Nicholas decides to sell everything he has and to give to the poor and the needy around him. Now, there are many stories about St. Nicholas, and some of them are folklore. Uh, But one of the stories that comes up time and time again as I did this research around St. Nicholas is the story of a man, a poor man, and his three daughters. Now, during this time, women were married to men based off of a dowry, 
meaning the amount of money that the daughter's father could come up with was the placement on the social hierarchy. So the more money you could provide in a dowry, the higher the status you could have. But if you were poor and you did not have enough to give a dowry, your daughters would likely be sold into slavery. Now, the story goes that this poor man was very nervous about this prospect of his daughters being sold into slavery, and he doesn't really know what to do. But late one night, a bag of gold comes flying through the window and lands in his room. And this is enough for him to be able to provide a dowry for his first daughter to be able to be married instead of going into slavery. Later on, about the time when the second daughter should be getting married, another bag of gold comes flying through the window and is enough for this daughter to have a dowry to be able to get married. A little bit more time goes by and it's time for the third daughter to get married And once again, a bag of gold comes flying through the window, lands in the room, and is enough to provide a dowry for his last and final daughter. Now, this is where some of the Christmas traditions come from that we know and love, because folklore has it that this gold landed in shoes and stockings that were hung around the fireplace, which is where that modern day tradition comes from. Also, oranges represent these three different bags of gold or these donations that came at a time of need for this family. So as things go, Nicholas is brought into Catholic sainthood and his legacy and story lives on throughout the generations until about the 1800s when pop culture, modern day pop culture, I don't know if you can even call it that when it was in the 1800s, picks up on this figure of St. Nicholas and giving during the Christmas season and begins to turn St. Nicholas into the Santa Claus that we know and love today, who has a big red coat and a big white beard and lives in the North Pole and has a reindeer named Rudolph that leads him through the fog to be able to to deliver toys and generosity to all the children in the world. And what a beautiful story. What a beautiful way to be able to lay a foundation of joy and generosity during the Christmas season than to reflect back on the roots of some of the traditions that we now subscribe to today. And if you dig into other traditions, what you'll find is you'll find the same thing happening, that all of this tradition is based on this season of giving generosity and getting outside of yourself. And so with Christmas coming up very soon, if you for some reason are not feeling the spirit of Christmas, or the generosity that sometimes comes during this time of year, what I would just invite you to do is to take a minute and step back with what you are doing, whether it's buying presents for people or decorating your home or whatever it might be, the parties that you're attending, and just start to imagine what happened in order to create that. Why do we actually do that in the first place? And look and search for the true meaning of Christmas. And what you will find, as I have found, as as my mindset has, has shifted in this space, is that you can't celebrate Christmas without giving and generosity because that is what Christmas is based off of. So if you need a little bit of Christmas cheer to get you through this season that can be a little bit stressful, I would just say take a look outside yourself and see if there was somebody in your sphere of influence that you can help wrap presents or decorate their home or give a a gift to a neighbor 
or something that would be even better, plan out a specific amount of money or time to be able to spend throughout the year on blessing the lives of those around you. I love Christmas and I love the ability that it has to make the rest of our year something that we can give back to humanity and the people that we love and care about and the people that we don't even know about but are in a challenging situation and we want to be able to be the change to be able to lift them out of whatever that looks like. Well, team, I hope you have a wonderful and incredible Christmas with your family or loved ones. And let's go out into the world and create good with the money in our pockets together. Talk soon.